host Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. Come with the blog post we want to share with you, and of course we're reviewing two phones here. We review a number of phones, so be sure to check on those on thechrisvossshow.com. Be sure to check into our YouTube channel. You can find it at Chris Voss, one word, on YouTube, and you can see all the wonderful videos and reviews we do of phones and also of great phone products uh, that you can take and accessorize your phones with. So let's get into this. What we have here today is the T-Mobile HTC One S is a Sam, and we have the HTC Evo V 4G from Virgin Mobile. Now it does say Sprint on the top of it, but for those of you that don't know, Sprint is own owns Virgin Mobile. And effectively uh, takes in the phone runs on their network. So that's the reason for that. You can see here the boot up uh, and what they go through and everything. Uh, phones are a little bit similar in their build and how they do. Uh, there's a few differences between the two. And of course, we'll go through those and give you an idea of what the differences are. Now we're not really comparing. Uh, we're not really comparing uh, carriers here. Uh, you can get this the HTC One S through t-mobile.com, that's t-mobile.com and uh, you can find of course one of other products there too. Uh, with the Virgin Mobile phone you can go to virginmobileusa.com, that's virginmobileusa.com and you can be able to um, take advantage of their service there and uh, um, be able to see all the things they do have. Now one major difference between these two companies that uh, I do want to highlight when you get the Virgin or the T-Mobile phones, uh, you you usually are getting a phone at a discount, paying for a two-year contract. Uh, with the uh, Virgin Mobile phones, you usually pay month to month. It's a prepaid situation, and uh, so that's the subtle differences between the two companies. You can decide what what works best for you and what's good for you. Now both phones are built by HTC and are very good phones. I actually really like both phones. Um, and we'll get into some discussion as to what those are and how those work. But let's talk about some of the differences between these two phones in their build and their specifications, shall we? So let's talk about it. Uh, we've got with the HTC One S, we've got dimensions of 130 by 9, 65 by 8 millimeters. Uh, we've got a weight of 119.5 grams, a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED capacitive display, it's 540 by 960, HTC Sense 4.0. It comes out of the box with Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. We've actually upgraded this one to 4.03 Ice Cream Sandwich, and we're hoping that it will eventually upgrade to 4.04. Uh, it comes with 16 gigabytes of built-in storage, a 1 gigabyte of RAM, dual-core 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon processor, and it's got an 8 megapixel rear camera and a 1.3 megapixel front camera. And it comes with Beats Audio, of course, all the HTC line does, uh, at least all the latest does. Uh, let's talk about the HTC Evo V 4G. Now with this one, you're looking at a candy bar touch screen. It runs on Android 4.0. I believe we've upgraded this. We'll check on its uh, system in a second. It has a 1.2 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon processor, 1 gigabytes of RAM, 4 gigabytes of internal memory. It has an upgradable memory expansion with a micro SD card. You can go up to 32 gigabytes. It has a 4.3 QHD capacitive display. 1.3 megapixel front facing camera and in a 5 megapixel uh, rear camera. Battery type time 360 minutes and it also comes with Beats Audio. So that gives us a breakdown and comparison between these two when it comes to specs. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, they pretty much are working off the HTC uh, Sense software. Let's get into the settings and we'll verify for you here uh, how these work. Uh, when it comes to the software, and of course I'm doing two things at once here, so we'll see if I can't be able to process all of that. Um, if I recall correctly, we have updated the um, we have updated the HTC Evo V 4G to 4.03 on the software. The Sense is actually running on 3.6 on the HTC Sense version, and uh, on the 1S, we're looking at 4.03 on the Android version and HTC Sense 4.0 on the uh, 1S. 
So you can see the comparisons here. They're both fairly updated to the latest versions of Android uh, that are available for their phones. Let's say it that way. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our home screens and take a look at how these take and play out. Now you can see here on the front uh, that we're looking at you've got a back button with the HTC One S, a home button, and you've got a recent apps button. One thing that has taken place, as you can see over here on the Evo V4G, there's a menu button on many Android phones, um, but there's not one on the One S. The 4.04 updates that have been coming out for the One series have uh, turned this button into an optional menu button instead of a recent apps button, and we're hoping that once the One S gets updated, it will activate that feature. Uh, to be, as of this recording, is to be uh, is to be announced. So we don't know if it will get it, but I imagine it will eventually. Uh, so uh, you've got that on the bottom. Across the top, you have a speaker um, and for calls, and also your front-facing camera. It's got a nice build to it, um, where it's got kind of a steel frame or a metal frame, if you will. And um, let's take a look at what we have with the HTC Evo V4G. Uh, we have a home button, a menu button, a back button. We also have a search button. Across the top, of course, we have an area for your speaker for calls. And we also have uh, your front-facing uh, camera. And as you can see, a bit of an indicator light. So let's take a look at the other sides, fronts, backs, and uh, all the good stuff. Okay, so here we can see, you can see the two phones side by side. You can see that the HTC Evo V 4G is a little bit, well, quite a bit thicker than the One uh, S, and so that definitely makes a difference in the phone. But uh, we'll talk about some other features that uh, may make a difference for you there. Uh, on the bottom, of course, we have a microphone hole. You can see a very small microphone hole here, and then there's also a hook clip to be able to pull off the back. We'll show you how that works here in a bit. On the top, we have your power button. We have a clip to take off the top part of the back. We have a microphone hole and a headphone jack hole. On the uh, Evo V 4G, we have a power button. We have a uh, earphone plug, headphone plug, and a microphone hole, if you will. Okay, so now this is what gets interesting. With the One uh, S, we have a rocker up and down button. It's very sleek, very elegant, and very sturdy. Uh, on the Evo V 4G, we actually have a shutter button, okay, a big nice one you can push to. We have a switch, and what this switch does is it switches between 2D and 3D pictures. So it has the ability to take 3D pictures on it, which the One S does not. We also have the uh, rocker button for the volume up and down. Okay, so now down this side, on the left hand side, we have uh, your uh, power jack to go ahead and power and uh, sync your cables on both this and the other. There is uh, HDMI output on these if you buy an adapter. You can go on to Amazon.com, buy an app that plugs into HTC devices and put them out to an HDMI output. Okay, now see, here you can see the backs of both these devices. Uh, the back of the HTC One has a beautiful, slick metal back with the Beats Audio logo. You have your speaker down here, which I really like because then it tends to bounce off and hear very well if you set it flat down against a, um, against a, uh, a flat surface. Uh, we have the camera eye up here, and we have, of course, your uh, flash uh, light lamp, if you will. One thing I do like about the HTC One S is it has a raised protection area around the camera lens to keep it from scratching and getting scarred. Very important to me in a, in a uh, phone camera. You can see here it's got a very beautiful back on the HTC One V. You can see here the different camera modes you can switch to between 2D and 3D. We'll get into that in a bit. And of course to do 3D it has two cameras on the back and two flashes. How about that? That's pretty freaking cool. Now it also has a very small speaker right here. Uh, it's very small. You may have trouble seeing it. But uh, uh, so the speaker is there, and uh, that's pretty much how the back of this works. Now, both phones have backs that pop off. On the HTC One, it has a area that pops off on the top and pretty much pops out so that you can put in your SIM card up in this area. And that's pretty much the only thing you get out of pulling that off. Now with the HTC Evo V, the whole back comes off 
and with the whole back coming off you have a place where you can put in a micro SD card to expand your memory like we set up to 32 gigabytes you also have the ability to flip out the battery if you like uh, and if you have spare batteries you can pull them out and of course withdraw them and uh, all that good stuff and uh, that's pretty much it for the back of the HTC Evo 1 and the 1S okay now I'm taking a look at these you you have uh, pretty much the great widget system and customization of all your menus like you do with the uh, HTC products and most of the Android phones that are out there uh, you can see here that as we swipe we have a left to right swipe uh, it does not have an infinite swipe to it you have to go back and forth to find the stuff you want or you can search for it of course um, but in essence there's your UI and how it works with the HTC one, you're looking at the same thing, a locked swipe, if you will, from left to right. It's not an infinite swipe. You do have some different widgets, of course, that you can bring in to be able to program these phones. They will both do 4G networks. Uh, if you can do that uh, through your area, you'll need to check and make sure you have 4G availability, of course, in your area. And uh, that's pretty much it. Notifications-wise, uh, slight difference. Um, where with the Virgin Mobile you can have some areas up here to do some different things. You've got your settings of course here and let's take a look at the settings menu and you can see here there's a little bit difference in the color setup and configuration uh, because the HTC uh, Sense is still running on 3.6 on the Evo V 4G um, it's not quite as pretty as this yet but it's still functional and does all the same sort of tricks and all that good stuff. So uh, you can see here kind of how the menus look and all that good stuff. With uh, going into your apps there's a difference in flow into how it works with the apps for uh, your T-Mobile One S it has a left to right uh, pull feature, pull swipe feature. With the um, HTC One S it's actually drag up and down. I don't think it matters either way as long as you know where you're at and how to find what you're looking for. So let's take into this. You can see here of course going into all the different uh, customization features and being able to add panels, withhold panels, erase stuff, all that good stuff you can do on both these phones. Now let's talk about speed tests. We'll get into some speed tests on both these phones and see how well they performed. Let's go ahead and pull those up now. Speed tests are important because they tell us how well they did uh, on their performance on their networks. Now we have the we have the uh, Wi-Fi on on both these, but if you notice, we're going to be just going to the results to test the results to see how they did, and we keep these, of course, in the back. Okay, so here we have several speed tests that we ran with both phones uh, on their given network. Uh, you can see here the difference that we had uh, in uh, the two networks. Uh, I believe on this side we were usually performing at a 4G space, uh, 4G performance, and also over here on the HTC One S. Okay, so now score-wise you can see how these two phones compared using the Antutu benchmark 2.9.2. Uh, and you can see basically uh, the HTC One X, or One S I should say, scored uh, much higher when it came to its benchmarking testing of uh, how it operated. Okay, so you can see here on billion counter the HTC One S uh, did it. Uh, counted to a billion essentially in 21.6 seconds and the uh, billion counter on the HTC Evo 1 uh, 4G did it in 39.7 seconds. Okay so here you can see some benchmarking results uh, where you've got the uh, HTC One S is performing very well. It's got a 4513. You can see some of the stats down here as to how well it did with CPU, memory, I.O., all that good stuff. With the HTC Evo V 4G you can see it rated Let's see here, 2133 compared to 4513. Uh, down near the bottom of the area, below the Olympus uh, LG 2X and above the HEC Desire HD. Um, so you can compare the two here. You can see some of the totals of the memory, etc., etc. Okay, so using Geekbench 2 app, here you can see the scores that each of these are taking and getting. You can see here that the, the HD Evo V4G scored 785 against the 750. 559 with the S. You can see here some of the integer scores, floating point scores, uh, memory scores, 
all that sort of good stuff. Let's go ahead and page down through some of this data so you can take and see it. And the great thing about this data, like I said, is you can compare it to uh, what you're experiencing on your current phone and determine which phone's right for you and which might work better. You can see here the apparent difference is there's a 1.2 gigahertz processor in the Evo and there's a 1.5 1 gigahertz processor in the um, one S. So that makes a lot of difference when it comes to being able to score these performance things. So it's a little apples to oranges in that center format. Um, here, take a look. Uh, you can see the breakdowns for integer performance, of course, side by side. Let's go ahead and page down. Uh, you can see here the floating point performance numbers that have come out here and how it fared. Let's take and go on down. And here's our memory performance numbers that you can see here. Um, and then going down further you can see the stream performance numbers and how they came out. So this gives you another idea with benchmarks uh, using Geekbench 2. Okay so now here we're doing a GPS satellite to test to see how accurate both phones can come down in being able to know their proximity of course on the planet Earth and how many satellites they actually pick up. You can see the GPS on the 1S is much better. Uh, it performs and picks up up to 20 different satellites in use for this thing. It's using 12 and it's coming with an accuracy of about 10 feet. Uh, the GPS isn't doing too bad on the Evo V 4G. Uh, you can see it's coming within 13 feet which is really good. Uh, it's only using about 9 satellites it's picking up and in use of course the same but this gives you a great idea as to how well they are at knowing where they're at and being able to pick up those signals. Okay so now here we can see using A and E benchmarks app uh, how well this performed using threads in benchmarking mode you've got NADA and Java threads you can see here the uh, native scored 5803 and 192 for Java on the 1S on the Evo V 4G uh, you can see that it scored uh, on the native 2772 and then the Java 95. Okay, so now here we can see in the GL benchmark 2.1.5 Egypt test and just a standard that the uh, Evo V 4G perform with 4857 frames, 43 frames per second. With the 1S, uh, it performed at 6426 frames at 57 frames per second. Okay, so here we can see we're using the pass mark performance test. Uh, how will these two phones shape up? You can see here they actually did pretty good with their overall scores um, with the system, uh, the Evo V 4G coming in a little bit lower. Uh, let's page down to the CPU tests and we can see here you can see the scores as to how well they did on the CPU test and the disk tests. We'll go ahead and down, page down some more so you can see more of the stats and compare them side by side. And then of course memory tests you can see here a little bit of a memory edge here over here um, and in looking at the 2D graphics tests you can see how those numbers come out in 3D graphics tests actually a little bit of a win here for the Evo V4G okay so now what we're doing is we're doing a in-call Skype call so that you can see how the front facing camera performs and puts the image onto another computer. We're using a uh, iPad 3 for this of course. This is uh, on a Wi-Fi and so this is a localized Wi-Fi between the two different computers just to give you an idea as to how well the uh, front facing camera performs if you're using FaceTime, Skype or uh, you, I shouldn't say FaceTime should I, that's an iPhone thing, but if you're using Skype or Tango or other things you can see how that's going to come out the other side. Now let's try using the uh, network of T-Mobile in this case. Okay, so you can see the image here that the uh, front-facing camera takes and picks up as uh, we take and utilize it. You can see here the image that's being portrayed to my uh, iPad 3. This is of course across the localized network. You can also see how well I'm coming out on the other end of the screen on the uh, Evo V 4G. So it comes up very well for uh, what we are working with here uh, when it comes to front-facing cameras. Now let's take a look at the camera on both these devices and you can see how that operates. Cameras, of course, to me are some of the most important aspects of a smartphone. Um, you can see here that uh, they're very, really, very similar. You've got controls up here for uh, turning on and off your flash uh, light and bulb. Uh, you've got the settings menu here. You can, of course, do the number of things you can always do through Androids. Uh, you can, of course, do lots of different controls, image resolution, 
video quality, et cetera, et cetera, um, where you can adjust it up and down, view durations, image adjustments uh, that you can take and make. Basically, just like you would with an expensive camera, you can make definite adjustments to it. Um, uh, you can, of course, change your ISO, white balance settings. One thing that is nice with the HTC phone is it has a feature where you can shoot up to 20 frames uh, in like an action shot, and then you decide which ones you want to take and keep, and it will delete the rest of them. It also has continuous shooting, which is really, really fast, and so that works out really well. Let's go into camera options. You can see here you've got a few different things you can do with face detection, auto smile, capture, widescreen, resolution, etc., etc. Video options, you've got different things like stabilization, record with audio, uh, camera interface, of course, the grid, all that sort of good stuff, auto upload, etc., etc. Down here you have uh, the ability to change different scenes, if you will, for camera scenes, HDR, portrait, landscape. These can help adjust some of the auto settings for light and different other issues you may have in shooting environments. Uh, with the this opaque circle up here, this gives you the ability to create different effects, and the effects become um, the effects become apparent in the uh, lens that you can take and see, and you can choose several different uh, ones that they have available here for you, which is pretty cool. Um, and of course, you can choose what you want to take and do. You can see here we have a zoom bar, so we can zoom in and out, and then we also have a shutter button and a uh, button for moving using the uh, video camera. The uh, portfolio or area that will keep track of your photos you can find of course there in your bottom right hand side. Now uh, the colors come out really good on the HTC's but one thing that's interesting about the HTC One line is they've jacked up the yellow, blues and greens and they've basically done it to make the photos pop a little bit more. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. You can adjust it down in the settings if you want. But we have noticed that the colors come out with a lot more yellow. And if you're in a yellow environment, you tend to notice it a whole lot more. This is an example of a shot we did. It takes great photos with the S <clears throat> and both with the X. I, mean, I think they're probably the same camera when it comes down to it in their build. Um, but you can see here, this uh, the floor of my uh, kitchen is much darker than this. Uh, and you can see here the contribution of the yellows and also the greens. Um, it works very well. The, the colors in video and in photos look really good. Comes out really nice. There's sometimes when I'm using other smartphone cameras where I have to actually kind of enhance the, um, the lighting and post production. So this gives you kind of that feel and balance to it. You can also see here how it performs in a video setting with taking video. And uh, you can also see here there's a little bit more yellow than what you would see uh, on the photo that's coming through on the video. So very interesting that one. Of course, there's different ways of adjusting this and all that good stuff. So it's not a killer in any way, shape, or form. It's a great camera that's in the S and the X. Um, let's go into a low light video situation. This is, of course, using the uh, camcorder light, if you will, on the back of the thing. Uh, we got great colors. Uh, very good details in low light situation. This was a dark area. It was completely black and the phone lights it up very well and shows it off very well. Uh, flash wise, in a flash environment, this is a low level environment where this was all dark. You can see here the flash is very well lit up the environment. We've got the colors still pop. We've got very accurate shooting and detail. So, uh, very great camera on the HTC One S. Okay, so let's take a look at the camera on the Evo V 4G. I tend to like this thing. This thing's a lot of fun with the 3G element of it. We'll talk about that in here in a second, but let's look at the setup. Now, a lot of Android setups are the same. They have the same features. It's just a matter of how they're placed and what they're doing. Up here in the left-hand corner, we have different effects that you can add into a uh, shot. And, of course, these are real-time effects that you can see through the camera lens. So those are kind of fun to have. You can find those on most Android phones. Um, Let's go ahead and close that out. Down here we have the gallery. You can see if we touch on that, we would get the gallery look. You can see we also have a zoom button here. Uh, we have a different mode button here than what you find with HTC Sense 4.0. Uh, you can switch here between video and photo mode. Uh, and you can also switch between the front-facing and rear-facing cameras. Uh, you can see that right there for a second. Uh, Scene-wise, you of course have scenes where you can choose different scenes based upon what you're shooting, not as many in the selection that comes with the uh, 
with the Evo V 4G that you would find in the other phone. You have, of course, had the ability to very quickly turn on and off the camera flash, and then, of course, we have settings here. Of course, you have all the different things you can do with most HTCs. You can adjust resolution, review duration, uh, widescreen. You can adjust all these different things, auto-enhancing shots, face detection, all that sort of good stuff. So you can see that there. Now you have the shutter button here in either case, whether it's video or taking camera pictures. With the um, with the Evo V 4G, it does take better, more truer color pictures than the 1S. And I shouldn't say better because the the uh, Evo is a 5 megapixel, so obviously the pictures are sharper and much better on the S. But it does come more to the quality of or colors that you see as we discussed with the 1S uh, the latest HTC's they're kind of jacking up the yellows and greens, blues and greens so I like how the colors come out a lot better on the Evo V 4G uh, you can see here of course my flooring comparison colors with a flash in a dark lit situation come out fairly well with the Evo V 4G they don't pop as much as some of the other Evo uh, or I'm sorry, the HTCs that we've seen, the HTC One series, but they come out fairly well, especially for a low light situation. Um, here we can see a video, and you can see a much more darker, normal representation of what my floor actually looks like. It's kind of a rich brown, as opposed to that bright light uh, yellowish stuff that we've been seeing. So this is a great video. It takes wonderful video. Uh, here's a low light situation that we're dealing with where we have the flash activated. And this is the one part point where the Evo V 4G gets weak in low light situations using the flash bulb you know, or the uh, lamp if you will to uh, see stuff and uh, it just does not perform well in these formats. It might perform better if you're using 3D because both flashes and lamps will activate in those modes. Now, one of the fun things that we did, of course, do with here's some more pictures you can see. Uh, here's actually some cute pictures Hello, of my dog. Do you like being on video? Are you a happy dog? You like being on video, huh? He's a happy dog, that's for sure. Okay, so let's see if we can't go through some more pictures here, and we'll go through. You can see some more stuff of here. It takes wonderful great pictures. Let's skip down through here. What we're going to be looking for is some 3D video that I took. We had a lot of fun with the 3D video and of course you can switch between it just by making the switch up here and uh, let's see if we can find those pictures here. Right there. Now what you'll see here is they've of course made the screen in such a way that you can take and see uh, 3D and without requiring the use of glasses and so it works out really cool you kind of have to tilt the screen to get that effect I'm not sure how much of that you're going to get uh, on a camera lens through a camera but in real life seeing this in person it's very very cool and it's a lot of fun you can actually upload these videos to YouTube and in doing so you can ordain them to be 3D videos and YouTube will take and make that and you can invite your family, friends and everyone or anyone with the 3D glasses to be able to tune and see them. But what's really nice is you can also play these uh, videos on the device itself and be able to see 3D without having to um, use the glasses. It's a lot of fun to make the 3D movies because you deal with in and out and there's a whole uh, there's a whole kind of method to it. So uh, we had a lot of fun with the 3D element of this that you won't find, of course, in the 1S. But uh, yeah, it was very cool and a lot of fun. Uh, very enjoyable. In fact, one, my favorite feature in using this phone is to use it for the 3D element. I really, really love that. So that's a great feature of the phone that a lot of people don't really get into. 3D is awesome and probably in the future it's going to be even awesomer. Especially maybe if you have a 3D HD TV right now. This would be really cool to watch on it. So, in the end, I really like both phones. Uh, I've had a really fun experience with the uh, HTC One S. Uh, it's very thin, very beautiful, very fast phone, especially given it's a nice, small, thin, sleek size. With the HTC Evo V uh, 4G, what I think I do love about it is playing with the 3D camera. That's been a lot of fun to upload videos to YouTube, uh, send videos to my nephew's kids, and or I should say my brother's kids, and. Uh, and it's a lot of fun to play with when it comes down to it. It's a great phone. 
Uh, both are very well built and very well designed. Uh, we'll take a little bit of a drop here and there, not much, but but still very strong phones when it comes to their build and quality and everything that goes into them. Uh, hopefully they'll both be eligible for upgrades in the future to 4.04 .04 on upward. We'll see how that comes out, but both are really good phones. I'd highly recommend them. Thanks for T-Mobile for uh, loaning us the phones and uh, Virgin Mobile for loaning us the phones. Be sure to see them at t-mobile.com. That's t-mobile.com. Check out the great phones they have there. And virginmobileusa.com. That's virginmobileusa.com. Be sure to check out all the wonderful, beautiful phones they have there. And be sure to check back to the chrisvossshow.com daily. Be sure to check out our other phone reviews that we've done and all that good stuff. Thanks for coming by.